Hello, hello, hello. What is up, nieces and nephews? I'm your co-host, Lucas. And I'm Adam. And this is the Music for Miles YouTube channel. Uh, we are friends who are in different cities now, who are keeping in touch predominantly through music discussion. I mean, we talk about other things, but I don't know if we'd be texting on a day-to-day -day basis if it wasn't for music. So big music nerds here. So we thought it'd be a good idea to start the channel with at the end of the year with a favorite 10 albums of the year as an introduction to our music tastes. Um, so please like subscribe if you can stick around as our video quality and our editing skills will only improve from here. We promise. So <laughs> we promise we're going to give three honorable mentions, uh, just a quick blurb. So I'll start off with that one. Uh, there were two albums in December that unfortunately bumped some of these albums out. And uh, the first one being uh, Dirt Femi by Tovlo. Um, I think this is probably my favorite pop album of the year. Uh, there was a single, uh, No One Dies From Love, which mm. is the first song on the album that came out. And I've had that one on a lot of playlists. So I'd always kind of taken note of this album. Uh, yeah. The second one here is um, producer Knowledge and his House One uh, mixtape on Bandcamp. Uh, this one for me is my favorite house album of the year. Sorry to the man from Toronto. Uh, I love I love this one. It's his first real dive into house music, and I love grocery shopping to this music. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with that one. And then the one that really got bumped uh, at the end of this year was 070 Shakes album You Can't Kill Me. This was on my my list ever since it got released in May. She was fantastic in concert, uh, seeing some of these songs a couple weeks before this released. And Modus Vivendi was my 2020 album of the year. So really love Shake. Uh, unfortunate she couldn't make the lists, but at the same time, definitely one to to peek your ears to if you haven't. So yeah, my, my first honorable uh, mention on my list is uh, Wyland with the album Vices. Um, this is a super, super immersive synth laden kind of dance pop album that draws super heavily from like 80s dance music this album is it's fun it's short it's catchy one of my favorite dance albums of the year um second honorable mention is uh also um i've got you can't kill me by 070 shake um definitely a very very worthy follow-up to modus vivendi um don't think it quite reached the highs of that album but the production from mike dean was impeccable and my third honorable mention is muna with their self-titled album um definitely one of the catchiest pop albums this year um this album is full of bangers from front to back especially the second track what i want so yeah <laughs> shout out to muna yeah. i'll let you keep going after this honorable mentions if you want to give your 10th sure so yeah um, number 10 on my list, um, I know it has not been out for very long, but it is uh, Little Sims with No Thank You. Um, as always, Little Sims is a master lyricist. Um, just listening to her storytelling, her ability to craft a narrative with her lyrics is really, really admirable. And I think she continues the sonic palette found on Sometimes I Might Be Introvert with the same uh, cinematic, string-heavy production. It, fe it literally feels like you're listening to a movie. I have been listening to this album ever since it dropped, I what, last week? It's only been out for about a week and a half, and <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. I was blown away by this project um, from her, as I am with pretty much every single one of her albums. Yeah, I'll just be the whipped cream and the cherry on top of this discussion, because my 10th is also No Thank You by Little Sims. Um, <laughs> Me and you are definitely big fans of hers, and what a gift to be given this album out of nowhere. I mean, she released yeah. it uh, with no build-up, I think 10 days prior to it coming out. Uh, what is it, last Monday or something like that? Me and you both have Simbi really high on our on our year-end list last year. For me, it was my album of the year. Uh, and it's just an amazing, particularly an amazing three-album run from hers. I think Little Sims hit a grand slam and has, and has rounded the bases three times. I think the second one off the bat, uh, Gorilla, sounds really a tribe called Quest-esque. So that was definitely uh, nice on my ears and has been one that I consistently go back to. I think it's a shame if you're a hip-hop head and you don't know who she is or haven't um, haven't given a project of hers the time. Uh, any of her last three are, are, are worthy. So number nine on my list is actually Dirt Femme by Tovlo. Um, I know you had this in your honorable mentions, but this uh, was just able to uh, squeeze into my top 10 here. It is dancey, it's immediate, it's punchy, 
and the choruses on these things have been stuck in my head ever since I heard them. I think the main thing that drew me to this project was uh, her collaborations with S.G. Lewis, who is one of my all-time favorite producers in the world right now. I think he's an absolute genius. I think everything he touches turns to gold, and I think that really shines through on the songs that he's a part of on this album. I think both of them bring out the musical talent of one another very, very well. Yeah, even something to add to this, because I, I didn't know that was on your top 10, is there's, there seems to be a certain speed to this album that I don't typically get with, with pop records. And not that it's quick or that it's slow, but it feels like you're on like one of those futuristic, like um, quick rails that you see in like, in like futuristic movies, almost Tron-esque, but like you're going at a speed, but it almost feels like you're gliding through it. And I think that comes across so well on the album. Um, really one that I, I didn't have any familiarity with her going into the year. And it's just, it's tremendous. Like you were talking about. Yeah, so number nine for me is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my neo soul and R and B pocket here with uh, Umi, uh, her debut album Forced in a City. This this project is wonderful. Um, really caught me off guard. I think I was only aware of it coming out maybe a week and a half before it came out. This project really balances sad reflective along with self affirming tracks. And look no further than there's three tracks near the end um, called Everything is Everything will be all right. 100 Days in Bird's Eye View, which really um, shifts back and forth between um, introspective and also um, self-affirming. That one I had I had to put in my top 10 and I'm, I'm glad it stuck there. Uh, my number eight pick this year is Smidley with Here Comes the Devil. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with Smidley, that's the solo project of the foxing lead singer, Connor Murphy. This is Connor Murphy's second um, solo album. And it's this really, really um, vulnerable and introspective collection of indie rock songs with a lot of really, really unique production choices. The production here just like flits between indie rock and kind of this wonky electronic sound with chopped vocals in the background. And Connor's uh, vocals over top of these, I think, work really, really well. Um, the song I'm Breaking My Own Heart is one of my favorite songs of the year. It has an amazing saxophone solo on the bridge. This one will definitely have you uh, getting a little wistful and teary-eyed at times. Well, I guess the number eight spot for both of us is uh, a little bit deeper because for me, um, this album waited until about a week before this video to break into my top 10, and that's yeah. um, Hypochondriac <laughs> by Breckens. I've known about CBD uh, since early into the year, and it was one of my top songs in my Spotify rap. This album goes into a lot of different directions sonically. You have emo rap, glitch pop, uh, some rock in areas. Um, there's always something weird around the next turn. And also I hear a lot of influences all over this project. So this is sounds like early Black Bear, but honestly better than anything Black Bear's ever done. <laughs> um, the beginning of the song Deep Fake sounds Bon Iver-esque and the end of it, um, has an instrumental section that sounds like American football. Uh, this has a little bit of introspection of, of like blonde Frank Goshen or late Mac Miller, but in in a different style. I don't want that to to hinder your your idea going into it. But definitely the introspection there. Um, and this this album has some emo elements of what I would want. Maybe not as edgy, but it's some has some elements that I would want from a bareface solo project, the member of Rockhampton. So uh, I, I just really like where it pulls from, but doesn't feel to um to copycat in one way or the other and honestly because it hasn't come it's only been out for a little bit it might shift up it might shift down um that's kind of just the beauty and the stress of a december album so uh number seven on my list is fragments by um electronic producer bonobo this is definitely my favorite um electronic project of the year it's this super lush immersive and vibrant a uh, collection of like house and electronic tracks that really pull from a lot of very like tranquil like a very tranquil sonic palette you have like strings mixed with these really beautiful guitar passages there's a lot of great collaborations here um joji has a fantastic feature later on in the album uh jamila woods uh, has delivers an amazing vocal performance on the song Tides. The best way I can describe the experience of listening to Fragments is sitting on a deserted beach just watching the sunset. His Tiny Desk concert from earlier in the year was absolutely amazing. Watching him do these 
stripped down acoustic versions of these house tracks was something I wasn't, I didn't think was possible, but man, did he pull it off. Number seven on my list is also somebody who delivered a really great tiny desk, and that is Mote My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Mm. Um, man, one of the best album rollouts I've ever lived through, um, hip hop or otherwise. He just seemed really in touch with what he wanted to do with this project. Like he's one of those guys that came into the new year and was like, I know exactly how I'm gonna lay this out. Uh, it first came out in January with Walk In, which is still one of the best songs of the year for me. And I couldn't shut up about it when it got released. Obviously working with different artists, there's a lot of features in here and none other than not just T-Pain, but like OG T-Pain. Um, I It's one of my favorite hip hop features in the last 10, 15 years. Um, and obviously the line drunk underwater that they go in clown fishing. <laughs> I, I think that reappears in my dreams a lot is just that <laughs> line. So number six, we have Banks with Serpentina. This, I pretty much knew nothing about Banks uh, going into this year. Um, in fact, I, I probably wasn't even considering checking this album out until I got it recommended to me by a friend of mine who insisted that it was one of her favorite albums of the year. And so I listened to it and it blew me away. The song Meteorite is one of the catch one of the catchiest songs of the year um and then you have more intimate moments like dead end it's like one of the best r b pop fusions that i've heard this year yeah for me checking out that project if you want any sort of a quick uh understanding of what to like on there the adrenaline rush that is f love on there mm. um yeah just three minutes of of, of energy in not too uh loud or chaotic of a way number six for me uh, it remains my favorite rap album of the year only by a slight but distinct hair over denzel and that is uh vince staples uh, ramona park broke my heart it's a continuation of his self-titled from the previous year and i think the way that he uh, moves around on house beats um the production here is is one of the highlights. Conceptually, this thing is just really, really cool. And it's something that I think that, that surprised me the most at events was, was to have a project that um, circled back on so many things and was really um, topic focused. Uh, Ramona Park in LA being really beautiful, but the fact that it's riddled with gang violence and turmoil, I think it fits well with the sonic palette of the album. The fact that he's still rapping about gang banging and insecurities but at the same time, it sounds so rich and full and you get some some sounds of the ocean. It's a really good duality. My favorite on it is uh, is Rose Streets. Uh, definitely one of my favorite songs of the year. I think it was in my top five of my Spotify wrapped. He's, he's one of my favorite rappers at this point after after this album. It really is a great addition to his catalog. So yeah, number, number five, going on to number five, Charlie XCX with Crash. One thing I heard uh, a lot of people saying about this one is this is really Charlie's first album to kind of look towards the past for inspiration rather than the future. Um, so if you've heard any of Charlie's previous uh, records like Pop 2, um, the album Charlie, they're very kind of futuristic, hyper pop inspired. Um, she works a lot with Dylan Brady, who um, is one of the members of 100 Gex. Um, but this album is much more of like a straight forward pop album the opening track the title track crash uh features production from the 1975's george daniel who charlie is dating i believe um so you can definitely hear his influence on that song and it's just a really really fun dancey short and sweet project from charlie xcx um i know a lot of people um didn't say it was quite as good as some of her previous records because it wasn't quite as like forward thinking but i think for what it was uh, it, it was i think a damn near perfect pop album so number five for me um this is fear of the dawn by jack white um maybe you would think i'm a white stripes fan by putting this in my top five but honestly um i had never really given the white stripes much of a listen much of the time that maybe they deserved um but this one slapped me in the face uh during an hours long car ride in, in may and uh, I, I picked up the record under 24 hours later um it, it's just weird it's edgy but not too um grating on the ears uh, and i think the conceptual aspect of it is is really cool and adds to a nice aspect if it's an evening listen. So Fear of the Dawn uh, and the cover even describes this uh, in a way. It's sort of a night owl getting its work in while people slumber completely unaware. 
And I think that a little bit of that describes Jack White and sort of his, um, at least his personal feelings of being a little bit underappreciated in the current day and age in rock. And uh, it really allows you to sink into the persona that Jack is setting up here. And I think it's going to be one that I spin into the new year. So um, on to the number four spot here, I have Dance Gavin Dance with Jackpot Juicer. Definitely a bit of a curveball for me, this album. Uh, this like type of post-hardcore and screamo isn't really something that I tend to gravitate towards that much. It really kind of took me back to my early high school years where I would listen to um, bands like Breaking Benjamin and Chevelle. I, I think Dance Gavin Dance are one of the most unique post-hardcore bands out there right now. Um, I think they do a great job of blending a lot of different genres into their really unique form of screamo. So you have elements of pop rock, you have elements of funk and R&B, you have some electronic elements in there too. Will Swan is one of the most talented guitarists uh, working today. Some of the melodies and some of the riffs that he comes up with, I like. they're super technical, very math rocky, but man like just listening to this guy shred is is insane john messes uh screamed his unclean vocals have really really improved over the years just listening to um dance gavin dance's first album versus listening to this one so with no, with my number four i have to give a quick shout out to both of our girlfriends for pushing us pushing me towards this one um i have written here that there are days where i want this to leapfrog uh into my top three or four and uh, this week it did. It's Preacher's Daughter by Ethel Kane. Um, mm. This one is just one of my most thought about albums this year. I saw a tweet once that said, Ethel Kane is Lana Del Rey for people whose Taylor Swift is Arca. And that is always, <laughs> that is always stuck with me. Um, there's elements of indie, Americana, slowcore. Um, there's some darker elements here. There's also like a big pop song, American Teenager to get a better understanding on where the album is centered. Uh, the song Thoroughfare is one of my favorites of the year. This is actually the first of a supposed trilogy of a small town teenager exploring where she stands with her religion and her aspirations. There's really long track lengths on this one, which has been a talking point, but for me, they're extremely warranted based on the payoff and uh, knowing a little bit of the slow core genre. If you can get past that, it's really every song has something to offer there. The top three. So um, the number three spot on my list belongs to the 1975 uh, with their album Being Funny in a Foreign Language. So uh, the 1975 have been one of my favorite bands for many, many years at this point. Their most recent projects have been super experimental and boundary pushing and forward thinking, but this one uh, really kind of scaled it back. The band really wanted to get back to their roots of uh, performing as a band and writing more earnest and straightforward songs. And I think that works so well. This is easily the band's most mature and most cohesive uh, sounding album yet. It's, only, it's also their shortest at only 11 songs. And I think the short runtime really, really allowed them to create something tight and compact and cohesive. And just hearing Maddie Healy go from writing a song called Sincerity is Scary a couple years ago to writing a song that's just called I'm in love with you, I think is that that's character development right there. That's definitely some growth. Jack Antonoff produced this album and he, I think works. Um, I think his sound meshes really, really well with the 1975. It's just a really cool uh, blend of indie pop and kind of Baroque pop. There's just a really pure sincerity to that, that I really, really respect. So for me, uh, number three is something that you'll probably see a lot in your in other people's top tens as well. Uh, it's Big Thief's Dragon New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. Uh, if you need a folk record from this year to introduce yourself to the current scene, look no further. They just did something on this album that um, blew people away, even people who were expecting a lot from this. It's just a band that continues to welcome people into their fan base. It's 20 tracks, and I think the cover portrays the album track list so well. Um, the cover being just an array of animals sitting around a campfire with a different instrument and a different type of chair. They all offer something different, and every one of them is just as, as significant as the others around it. Featuring one of my favorite songs of the year, if I had to pick out of this barrage of, of different styles here is Little Things. 
uh, I've never thought of a track as being folk shoegaze, and this is absolutely it. And I think now I need to create a playlist of <laughs> folk shoegazy songs um, and, and get to work on that one. Uh, I think Change, the intro, is one of my favorite openers to an indie folk record ever. Uh, it, it was said that they produced about 50 tracks during the recording sessions, during the four recording sessions of this album. And it said that all four members had about three or four tracks that they wanted to make the album that had to ultimately get cut. So they've got a lot more in the vault. And so there's, there's really no stopping for this band if they stay together. So uh, on to number two. My number two spot uh, belongs to The Weeknd with Dawn FM. So I feel like... The weekend's fan base is kind of divided between old weekend and new weekend, um, with really the dividing line being the album Starboy from 2016. Uh, people really saw him kind of go into more of like a pop uh, direction with that album. If we're talking the weekend's best pop album, I think Dawn FM just might be it. That that concept with with Jim Carrey. Uh, narrating the album, I think, is is just... I never expected to see Jim Carrey uh, narrate a Weekend album. This sees Abel kind of delve more into that 80s synth-pop sound that he started getting into on After Hours. Um, and this is kind of... Like, if After Hours is him kind of just putting his foot in the water, this is him, him diving straight into it. Songs like Gasoline, uh, How Do I Make You Love Me, Take My Breath, Sacrifice, the, the first five songs on this album are it's a perfect five track run in my opinion I, th I don't think the album wavers at any point it's it's dark it's introspective but also upbeat this is the second album of a new trilogy uh, that he's working on that starts with after hours so definitely very very excited to see where that third part of the trilogy goes in the coming years all right so now i'm number two for me and um i have a confession I'm kind it. of a slut for R and B, <laughs> and what? so, um, yeah, yeah, you know me. I, um, <laughs> it's just always been there. It's been my anchor in my music taste since I was a teenager, and so I thought about maybe putting Big Thief at two a couple times, and Preacher's Daughter was was asking questions, but this one has just remained strong. And it's Three Dimensions Deep by uh, R&B artist Amber Mark. If you listen to the first three tracks on this album, uh, I think you'll find a, a decent amount of the rest of the album to be up your alley. Uh, the song FOMO was my number one played song on my Spotify Wrapped. Uh, just a great song Slaps. right before your friends come over to pregame. Oh, excellent um, song. It just, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I just really couldn't stop playing it for a couple months. And it's it's in every playlist that I have. <laughs> even the sad ones to, to cheer me up a little bit. <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good variety, um, but remaining within the same tune of the album, which is uh, you know a characteristic and an accomplishment in and of itself, especially for a, what is pretty much a debut album for her. I'm a little bit weird when it comes to r and I don't always trust my recommendations to people because I'm so engrossed in the genre. And so I'm not always sure how certain r and albums will hit certain people. Um, that in question of who I want to recommend music to, but I think Three Dimensions Deep breaks that mold, and I would nudge almost anyone to a, towards a majority of these tracks. Uh, my number one favorite album of 2022 uh, belongs to Melt My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. I just really became a Denzel Curry fan earlier this year when I decided on a whim just to check out the album Zoo. When I heard that he was putting out a new album, I was really, really excited, and wow did he deliver with this it's such a introspective and cathartic listen he really really opens up about the personal struggles that he's going through the demons that he's facing the uh, efforts that he's taking to kind of reinvent himself as a person and learn from his past mistakes i really think that comes through with the opening track melt session number one um, there's a lot of self-growth on this album not just personally but musically it's much more of a dive into neo soul and jazz rap, um, which he's already flirted with in the past, but I think this goes straight into it. But the song Zadoichi, which is a full on drum and bass track with an excellent slow tie chorus, or uh, the song X Wing, which is his full on dive into trap music, um, which we haven't heard a lot of uh, from Denzel Curry. You talked about the T Pain song Troubles. I mean, what a fun song that is. It has, this album also has one of my favorite lyrics of the year. Um, 
run the jewels because I kill a mic on any LP. What? Oh my goodness. That's so something only Denzel Curry could come up with. Some more standouts. Walkin'. You mentioned Walkin' earlier. The beat switch in that song is amazing. The music video complements it so well. So yeah, I, I think this, this album just kind of sounds like a therapy uh, session in the form of an album, which it's which is why I think it feels so cathartic to me. I mean, you've often used the uh, the expression cranium drano when talking about um, 22 a million by Bon Iver. But mm -hmm. uh, to me, Melt My Eyes is, is my cranium drano. It's mm -hmm. something that I'll go back to and listen to whenever I need a little uh, burst of motivation or inspiration. It always just gets me back onto my feet. Um, I'm gonna be quite possibly even more basic in my number one. Uh, there's sometimes where, you know, starter pack albums or uh, really basic good albums are great and basic for a reason. I think that we have a generational album on our hands with uh, Black Country New Roads Ants from up there. Um, an album that just perfectly exemplifies music not being judged by how often you play it. British post-punk is it right now uh, with bands like Black Country New Road. Black Midi, Squid is a band I really enjoy. Yard Act is another one. And uh, one of the members of Black Country Road is in a group called Jockstrap. These are just a group of university students with a lot of technical chops. So this album sounds both meticulous, but also really theatrical. Um, I could see this being performed on a stage. There's a lot of backstory to this with the, the vocalist, Isaac Woods. Um, it's, it's not, too much to say that his vocal performance and his lyrics is such a draw with this band. Um, he left the band the Monday before the album got released. And so um, there was a lot of speculation around that and they're gonna continue doing music. But um, I think what he left behind in the two albums that Punk Country New Road um, has already is just spectacular. Um, I had one of the most memorable first listens I've ever had to a piece of music sitting uh, at my work desk listening to it as snow fell uh, onto the ground in the windows right next to me. There's a song called Snow Globes in here. And so it just felt really iconic in the moment that that was happening. And I think I cried from the fourth song on. Their debut from last year was in the outskirts of my top five, but there's just so many memorable moments here. And it, it's bound to leave an impression on you, no matter whether you like it or how much you like it, or you don't care for it. Um, the place where he inserted the blade and in basketball shoes towards the end are so grandiose. Um, the last three songs could all be outros, which makes it just a ridiculous about 30 minutes, 30 minute experience where after the third to last and second to last song ends, you're like, what is there to do from here? Like you guys are still going. And then basketball shoes is like a three part, absolute epic of a song. There's just a lot of memorable lyrics that are a little bit strange and controversial, but you know, it's provocative. It gets the people going. Um, <laughs> this, the line particularly that has always stuck with me is um, with Isaac leaving the band because of mental health issues. We weren't sure whether we were gonna get some of those lyrics on the album or not. And uh, for him to say, show me the fifth or the cadence you want me to play. There's multiple examples of sort of hinting at why he made the decision that he made. And um, yeah, from the from the very first listen, this album felt absolutely monumental. It felt like a band with the seasoned catalog and with releases that are leading up to this opus, and it's not. Uh, so for me, this has unequivocally been my album of the year since February, and I'm just grateful to have known about this band and have been uh, anticipating this release, to have experienced it the day that it came out. So yeah, those were our top 10 albums of the year. We'd love to hear um, if any of our picks were on your list as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, we'll just have some closing notes here, a nod to both our Instagram pages and that some of the albums that we talked about here have accompanying write-ups on our pages if you want to go a little bit further into that. Thanks for tuning in if you made it this far. We really appreciate it. And like we said, uh, it's it's only up for he from here in terms of the production and uh, the dedication to this, this page. We're really excited to start this off. If you've made it this far in the video, we love you. You're the best. Thank you for being you. One I'd like to plug two different playlists. Uh, I have a 2022 playlist that includes three songs from my favorite 25 albums of the year, one from 26 through 50 and a couple miscellaneous, as well as a really cool idea I found at the beginning of the year um, that was to add one song per day, every day for the year um, to get an idea on 
you know, what song kind of dominated uh, my listening each day for 2022. So that's coming to an end. And uh, we'll put both of those in the in the description below. Outside of that, we're really excited to, to have you along here and we hope you, you continue to stick around. Um, thanks so much, everybody. And we'll, we'll definitely yeah. see you next time. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Peace. See ya.